Alright, so last time we created an abstract flower using the end clause. Today we are going to be doing the same, just a little bit differently. So I'm going to start off by taking a sender. This time instead of taking a disk, we are going to be creating some of the flower petals ourselves. So I'm going to start off by reducing the number to maybe like somewhere around 8. And then maybe reducing the cap to 0. Or maybe let's keep it to somewhere like okay, that's the number. Apart from that, we don't need the bottom part, so I'm going to quickly delete it. And let's go to object mode. And if you notice, the pivot point is in the center of the grid. We want it on the center of the model. So I'm going to send the pivot this and hit X on your keyboard and bring this down. Alright, so there you go. Now, the next thing that we want to do to create our own custom petals, what we are going to do is extrude the edges. So I'm going to right click on my object, edges, and double click on the edges to select them. And control E to extrude, or you can click on this icon, or you can also go to edit mesh and extrude. Once you've extruded this, make sure you have key spaces together turned off. If you don't have it, you'll notice that the extrusion is done as a group. So I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to extrude this. Let's scale this up first. And then again, extrude one more time. Bring this out. Bring this inside. Extrude again. And just bring it somewhere like this. Something like this. Alright, so there you go. Now, you'll notice that we get some kind of like a flower shape, but the resolution on this object is pretty low. So what I'm going to do is quickly go to Mesh and Smooth. Right. We have to increase some more of the vision. I think this looks pretty good. Now again, what we have to do is duplicate this multiple times to create multiple variations of that flower. So I'm going to hit Ctrl D, Ctrl D, bring this up, scale this down, and rotate this a bit. And now, to repeat the process, I'm going to hit Shift B. Alright, so I think that's about it, how much I want it. Uh, but if you want, you can hit one more time. I think we have around seven of them. That's quite good enough, right? So once you have this, what you want to do next is create our emitter. So, sorry, the collider. So what I'm going to do is click on my CS to create my collider. Bring this up. And let's scale this down to maybe like 0.2. Right, that's a good number. And I'm going to bring this way, way down. Right, so this is our collider. And the next thing I'm going to do is quickly go to my outline. Let's call this collider. And I'm going to keep this linear to as it is. So let's we'll start the simulation now. So I'm going to select all of my flowers. And what I'm going to do is go to FX menu, end cloth, and create end cloth. Right, so there you go. And select this, and let's create a passive collider. Now the first thing that we have to do is go to the nucleus and turn off the gravity. With that, it won't go down. Right? So the next thing that we have to do is uh, with this flower, we have to understand how thick the collision is. So what I'm going to do is quickly go to my end cloth and uh, in the collision, let's turn on the collision thickness. Right? So if you'll notice that we get a thickness of somewhere like this, which is a value of point 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to reduce this to 10. And I'm going to do the same with each and every petal. Alright, so what I'm going to do is select this and put in a value of something like this. Alright, so what basically we are doing is we are changing the collision thickness. We are reducing it to something like this to match the overall proportion of those objects. And that's it. Right, so once you're done with this, we are ready to collide. So what I'm going to do is go to our collider, which is this here. And on the first keyframe, I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to keyframe it. And on the 50th keyframe, it's going to go down something like this and hit S again. So now if you play this, I'm going to reduce this to maybe like 80. Alright. And let's see how this looks. And now we have something like this, which looks pretty good. If you zoom in, we get nice flowers. And if you want, you can turn on the two-side lighting to get uh, the idea how your simulation is looking. We get a pretty nice flowers. All right. Now, the one thing that uh, really gives it the feel of a flower is adding a bit more turbulence into the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my end cloth in here. And let's go to Fusion Solver and select turbulence. And uh, the attenuation will be somewhere around like point six maybe all right and the noise level will be around two and i think i'm going to keep the magnitude to five let's just play it out and see how it looks then we'll see all right so you'll notice that uh it's 
a pretty strong feel and we are going to actually slow it down by reducing the magnitude and let's see now oh it's still it's pretty strong there's one more thing that we want to add and that is the vortex field so we get more randomization on the applause and after that we'll slow everything down so let's select the vortex first i'm going to reduce the attenuation to 0.6 and let's keep it to one for now uh the axis here all right so we are getting the rotation it looks nice we are getting everything now to slow everything down again we are going to select everything and simply go to field and solve and let's add drag i'm going to reduce the attenuation to 0.6 again and let's see how this looks so we don't get much of a difference i'm going to switch this to five magnitude and we'll see i guess we still need a bit more 15 All right, so there you go. Now we are getting the turbulence and the rotation with everything being slowed down. So now everything looks pretty good uh, in here. All right, now I'm liking the overall look and feeling here. Um, maybe we can add a bit more turbulence in here, maybe 2.5. That will be a good number. Let's see. Okay, so to me everything looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is quickly reduce this to maybe like 50 and 50. Uh and let's quickly catch this up. So what I'm going to do is like mine plot and quickly go to end catch, create new catch and an object. All right, so our simulation is done and as you can see this is what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to keep a frame number to maybe like a 40 or maybe like 35. This looks pretty good. Let's turn off the grid, and actually we don't need our collider anymore. So I'm gonna quickly hit H on my keyboard. You can hit H on your keyboard, or you can go simply to your collider, and you can turn off the visibility, allow the visibility, or you can also go to the shape and turn off the visibility. Anything that works for you. And you'll notice that you won't see your sphere anymore. Right? So there you go. Now um, the next part is creating a stem. So what I'm gonna do is quickly go to create curve tools and CP CP curve tools. There you go. And with the front view, I'm gonna quickly just draw the stem in here. And let's manipulate this a bit. Uh, let's make not too much curve in here. And I think uh, we are good to go. All right, so that's it. Uh, now to create a stem out of it, all we have to do is select the curve and go to create and create mesh. There you go. Make sure you have the cap turned on. That um, if you don't turn on the cap, your, your cylinder will be pretty empty. Now let's add a bit more precision in here to make this um, pretty good, uh, smooth, and nice. Uh, if you want to see what and the difference, this is what you have, and precision. The precision will be better. Now to the size, I'm gonna make it a 20 size, and let's uh, reduce the overall size in here to maybe like maybe 40. All right, there you go. Now let's uh, quickly set up our camera. So I'm gonna select my camera. Let's go to our camera, and uh, what I'm gonna do is select my camera in here and make the focal length to 80. Once that is done, you can set your angle how you want. All right, and I'm gonna quickly lock my camera. Now it's time for the shading. So for the stem, I'm gonna quickly shade this to a simple flat color. That can be anything that you want. I'm gonna call this a stem, and maybe a roughness value of maybe like 0.5, and with the color value of maybe something of a dark green. All right. Now for all the flowers, what I'm gonna do is assign new materials and surface, and I'm gonna call this flowers. And uh, now to quickly shade this, what we have to do is open up the hyper shading here, and we are going to create some texture out of it as well. So I'm going to quickly go to a graph network, and in here, what I'm going to do is change the overall color with the ramp. All right, so let's select RGB to ramp, and in the RGB ramp, I'm going to quickly choose a color of maybe like a blue, and the secondary color will be somewhat in a variation shade like this. All right, this is good. We can always go back and change, and I'm going to attach this to the base color. All right, so we have something like this. Now, if we go for a quick test here, 
And let's see, and my light is kind of turned off, so I'm gonna quickly uh, go in here and turn it on. Alright, let's see now, I'm gonna update the full scene. Alright, so this is what we have as you can see. So, what we have to do is uh, to make it look good, we are going to pretty much change the overall uh, translation here. And again, you have something like this. I'm using an HGRI to light this in up. And again, you, if you want, you can go for a different color variation that you want, uh, maybe a flatter color or something like that. And once you're done with this, time to maybe give it a more of a flowery texture, right? So I'm using an HDR, but if you want, you can also use a uh, different light. I'll show you in a bit. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is quickly here go for a noise texture, right? This is a noise texture that we have. And uh, I'm going to make the octave to 5. Sometimes I just I have some trouble uh, feeding the uh, node that we have. So just give it a minute and say, I do automatically. Right, so there you go. Uh, I'm going to increase the amplitude to maybe something like a 5 or maybe like a 3. Alright, and I'm gonna scale this up to 5, 5, and let's give it an 8, maybe like 2 and 2. Alright, let's do it. Okay, so what we wanna do here is stretch one side to get that texture. And now to process this with the fake displacement, I'm gonna choose a bump 2D node. Alright, and I'm gonna attach the out color to the bump map. Alright, so there you go. And let's quickly preview this, how harsh you want it to be. Alright. And let's quickly refresh this. And let's move So there you go. And I'm going to attach this to the normal camera. Alright. If you go back here and if you preview this. Okay. We should get this nice texture going on. So there you go. Now if you want to change the direction of the overall noise. What you can do is you can instead of having 15 on the Y. You can set it to 15 on the X. And that will just change the overall di direction of the overall size here, alright, and uh, again uh, you can maybe just play around with the overall scale how much you want it, maybe changing the amplitude value to maybe like uh, slow it down a bit, alright, so there you go, uh, now for the next part what you can do is you can simply take a locator, if you want to add a focus, uh, maybe a depth of field will be very nice, and what you can do is you can select this locator in here, and what you want to do is you need this distance from camera detail, so to turn that on, you have to go to display, heads up display, and here you'll find object details. Turn this on, and you'll get this data. Now the next thing is, uh, go to your camera, select your camera, and copy this star here. Once you have that, scroll everything down to Arnold. And in the Arnold, turn on Unable Depth of Field. And in the Focus Distance, type in the value that you see on the locator, and that is 10.058. So I'm going to put in the same value. Alright, and sorry. Eight, and another purger is the overall how much blurriness you want. So let's give it a quick shot to see how it's looking. And I'm going to increase the aperture. Alright, and there you go. Now we have a nice focus going on. I'm going to keep it to 0.3 maybe. Alright, so looks pretty nice. And again, if you want, you can change the overall focus um, where you want it to be. I'm going to keep it to 0.100. Now for the lighting part, what you can do is, if you want to do something else, what you can do is maybe take a simple point type, alright, and that will give you this nice look of the overall feel of the flower, and you can have this multiple lights, alright, if you want, and what else you can do is, you can also go for an atmospheric volume, alright, and that will just uh, add a bit more to your scene, alright, let's see in a bit. And let's quickly update the full scene. Alright, so there you go. This is what we have. Um, so again, uh, if you want to play around with the bit of a volumetric scene, what you can do is maybe hide this under some petals and you'll get a bit of an interesting look for your scene. And the else you can do um, is maybe give it a nice color. Again, it's totally up to you how you want to play around with this. Alright, and that's it. So have fun with this, play around with this um, to get most out of your renders and if you want you can go for maybe different rougher texture, this is completely inbuilt of Maya, inside of Maya but again if you want you can take a maybe different roughness map to process it into the bump and you'll be good to go. Alright so that's it uh, for this one and I'll see you in the next video.